So hey there, welcome back to Accelerated Investor. Hey, I'm your host, Josh Cantwell. Today, I have a fantastic episode for you with Chris Miles. Chris Miles is a cash flow expert. He is an anti-financial advisor and a leading authority to teach entrepreneurs and investors and professionals how to get their money working for them today. Chris actually has retired twice before the age of 45, uh, once at 28 and again at 39 years old. Um, He's an author. He's a podcast host of the Chris Miles Money Show. He's been featured on US News, CNN Money, Entrepreneur on Fire, Bigger Pockets, and has a proven reputation with his company. It's called Money Ripples in getting his clients' financial results. In fact, his personal clients have increased their cash flow by almost $300 million in the last 12 years. And Chris and I are going to specifically talk today about a a very direct comparison between how you can get the same net free cash flow from a million dollars or $250,000, depending on which investment you pick. It's a great comparison. You're going to see it today. You're going to enjoy the show. So welcome Chris Miles to the Accelerated Real Estate Investor. Here we go. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you're looking to retire early with forever passive income, you're in the right place. This podcast is the go-to destination for real estate investors, both active and passive, and multifamily apartment investors, both new, intermediate, and advanced. Now, sit back, listen, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So, hey, Chris, listen, welcome to Accelerated Investor. I am so excited to have you on the show to talk about passive investments and retiring early. Thanks for carving out some time. How are you? Man, I'm awesome. So excited to be able to talk to you today, Josh. This is going to be a fun, fun conversation. I can already tell. No doubt. No doubt. So, you know, we're going to talk today to all of our audience who is trying to retire early, wants to look at alternate type of investments that can help them do that. People who are, you know, looking at what do I do besides my 401k, my pension, maybe you have a W-2, you're a high income wage earner, that kind of thing. Chris is an expert at this. This is his wheelhouse, helping people do that. And so, Chris, when you think about alternate investments and retiring early, what's just kind of high level? What's the first thing that pops into your head and how you help people do that? Yeah, I mean, that, that like you mentioned in the intro, I'm an anti-financial advisor, right? Like I'm anti-stock market, anti-mutual fund. Like I think all that stuff sucks because I was there. I was that financial advisor, you know, uh, trying to live the same life that my dad taught me to do, which was spend nothing, save everything, save it forever in crappy mutual funds. And hopefully someday I have something. But in truth, my dad, who did everything right, like Dave Ramsey taught, still, uh, when I met with him as a traditional financial advisor almost 20 years ago, and I'm looking at the situation, I'm like, dad, you did everything right. And you only have five years of retirement, you know, like you're, and you're going to be, you know, you're in your sixties and you can only retire for five years and hopefully you die. Right. <laughs> and and hopefully that was not the answer he wrong. wanted to hear. <laughs> right. Um, so it, that was, that was the thing that kind of created the crack in the armor for me as a financial advisor. Cause I realized, wait a minute, he's, he did everything right. He's not financially free. Oh man, well, wait, I'm on the same path as him. I've been doing the same thing as him and I can see my future and it doesn't look good. And I see my clients' future. Even some of them have decades of financial advice. They're still stuck in the rat race. They're not financially free either. And, and I realized that I was just teaching a bunch of BS and, and it took a friend of mine who was in the alternative investment space. He was doing real, more of an active real estate investor. Him and his dad were partnering on some deals and, and making way more money. And it kind of opened up this whole new horizon to me of this alternative investment space and what was, it, uh, what was possible. And the funny thing is I quit being a financial advisor. And then months later, I was able to become financially free and financially independent where I had enough passive income to pay for my expenses, you know, and, um, and that blew my mind because I thought I was 28 years old at the time. I thought I have to scrimp and save and work my tail off until I was 40 in hopes of maybe living on a you know, $60,000 a year pass, you know, type of income from, right. from the stock market. But no, I, I was able to do it much faster because it's all about cash flow. And so, so those are the kind of deals that we look at. 
Love it, Crystal. Let's talk for a second about some different groups of people. And I'd like to yeah. just hear your high level kind of strategies. Obviously, we're not giving financial advice here on of this. Course. I just want to make that disclosure. This is informational content. And obviously, you can reach out to Chris and I for you know more personal one-on-one opportunities and things. But Chris, let's talk for a second about that late 20-year-old, like someone like you that was mm-hmm. 28, maybe 25 to 35 years old. That's because there are so many, like right now, there's 128,000 households in the United States versus during when the, the market crashed in 2007, there was 160, I'm sorry, 128 million. Back then, there was 116 yeah. million. So there's so many more people now forming households and they're going to take on the big house and the car and the boat and then they're going to get themselves painted into a corner where they have to work. Let's talk about that group first, the 25 to let's say 40 year old. What kind of things did you do to get financially independent at such a young age? Well, the one thing is I had to question everything I was taught by typical financial advice, including from my own peers, right? So if you're 25 to 35 or so years old right now, the one uh, weakness or handicap that you have that we, we got in, being in our 40s is uh, you haven't seen a down market yet. Mm-hmm. You haven't seen anything fail yet. So, uh, I mean, think about the stock market was just running up like crazy since 2009. You know, it, it, it's finally taken a little breather and started to come down about 20% just this year. But from t- 2009 all the way through 2021, it barely even took a break. I mean, it just kind of kept going. There's a few times it kind of flattened out or even went down like a couple percent and then shot right. back up again. It never really stopped. Um, and so you've had this huge bull market there. You've had the huge real estate bull market. You've had this crypto bull market and, and all this dumb money and all this money printed like crazy is created this overinflated market that you've never seen something actually collapse yet. This right now is a perfect time to be wise and listen to those that are older than you. Um, and not, I'm not saying older and wise. It, well, they should be wiser, um, but right. I'm not saying older people than you in general. I'm saying that those of us, that have been through multiple recessions where I went through like Y2K and the great recession, I learned a lot of stuff. And the one thing I learned is that real assets are what you should be looking at right now. Not all the fake assets like crypto and stocks that everybody else have been raving about and everybody hypes about. And whenever there's hype, whenever something's hot, that's when it's not. Right. right? Once it became hot, it already it was already hot. You've already missed out on that opportunity. If it was even an opportunity, it's really just a gamble. The best place to be is in real assets. That's why I love real estate. That's why whether you're going into, you know, buying your own properties, whether you're an active investor or you're doing like turnkey real estate like I do, because I'm more of a passive investor. I don't like to be an active operator. So I do turnkey real estate. Um, I also go into syndications, whether it's be apartments or self-storage or even oil and gas right now has been awesome. If I have to pay more of the gas pump, I might as well make money off the profits of that too, right? Um, So there's so many ways you can make an alternative space, but it's got to be real tangible assets, not the paper assets or even the digital assets that everybody's been talking about in the news and the media. That is the stuff that will cause you to go broke and it'll push out your timeline forever. I think part of that mindset too, Chris, that you mentioned is, you know, the 25 to 35 to 40 year old who's not thinking about retiring early. They're thinking about, yeah, how do I keep up with my buddy that just bought a Jag and has a downtown apartment that's $3,000 a month? Uh How do I keep up with that guy and look cool? versus retiring early, which is the ultimate like cool play, right? The, the uh-huh. ultimate cool, coolness play is to be retired at 28 and financially independent or retired at 45 and financially independent. That's the ultimate play. I actually, we had drinks last night with my neighbor and we're all talking about the summer and they're both traveling a lot and working full schedules. And I'm like, yeah, I work Monday through Wednesday. And I've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I work Monday through Wednesday just because I've got this big portfolio and I've got some things I want to talk with my team. We have our meetings. We get all of our updates. But like Thursday, Friday, do whatever I want. Saturday, Sunday, do whatever I want. And they're like, what do you, how does that work? You know, so if I had started even earlier, like that 25 to 35 year old, you got to make the decision that looking cool with material assets is not as important as retiring early, being financially independent and actually taking the net free cash that you have and making investments, right? And making investments in real assets. So I think that's part of that, right? It's going to always be the the challenge of doing something fun with your money that gives you like 
this gratification now because you we get this yeah. euphoria of spending it or, or doing something fun versus the investment. So when you were 28 point. able to retire, did you at that point specifically did you buy rentals? Did you did you get into like lease options and, and make spreads on lease options? Did you do an oil and gas play? What was the combination of things that you actually executed to allow you to have enough net free cash to pay all your bills? Well, back in 2006, when I did when I was 28, 29, right? Um, I mean, that that was really, I was primarily just doing real estate. Um, so yeah, I was like doing rentals and that was more actively. I didn't, I, I was too cheap to hire a property manager, right? So I did it more active in that sense. Um, even did some lease type spread things. Actually, I, like I remember I, I uh, took my starter home, sold it to an investor at full appraisal value to pull out all the equity, strip it all out, and then turn back around and lease it back from them. So then I can sublease it to a renter. You know, I did things like that. Um, but you know, you bring up a good point because money is a magnifier of your soul, right? It makes you more of who you already are. It doesn't change you. It just amplifies whatever's inside of you. Um, that 28 year old, 29 year old self of me was insecure. Mm. So as I hit that, as I got out of the rat race, here's the warning is that of course that was 2006. The next year we start moving into the recession, right? We start moving to the great recession. And, uh, and I was, I was doing all the Dave Ramsey stuff, even though I was preaching against Dave Ramsey at that point, like I was putting all this extra equity in the house thinking I just pull out the equity whenever I need it because banks will let anybody pull it out without, you know, I was a mortgage broker. So I would know they'll pull it out without, you know, you could take out your money. And as long as you have a heartbeat and a 660 credit score, you're fine. Right. And, um, and I was that, but um, when all of a sudden the credit markets tightened up, I couldn't get to the equity and I got prideful. I got arrogant because of that insecurity in me because I thought, well, I got to show people how valuable I am. So I went and I bought that Mercedes, right? I bought this nice new Mercedes. I went and I, I bought a nice big little McMansion, you know, to show off. I had a young family at the time, but hey, who cares? Have a you know, huge 5,000 plus square foot house. It's awesome. You know, and I actually, it was actually a parade home too. It was like one of those show homes that they had for, you know, sure. that people would walk through and tour. And I wanted that because I wanted people to be wowed by it. You could it tell wasn't because I thought it was a great house. Yeah. What's that? You, so people, you could tell people when they walked in, this was in the parade of homes, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, it, it, it was a street of dreams home or a parade of homes, right? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and so it was, it was all about showing people how awesome it was. But when the recession hit and I started going in the whole 16000 a month, um, that's when things got interesting because I had to turn in that Mercedes. Um, I turned in before they could repossess it because I'm like, guys, you're going to take it anyways because I can't afford the $1,100 a month payment. Um, so I turned that sucker in. And, uh, and then, of course, the collectors came back and said, hey, we auctioned off for $30,000 less. Can you pay us $1,200 a month? I'm like, if I could pay that much, I would have paid it in the first place. Right. Um, so I had collectors call it daily. You know, I had, I ended up, eventually my house got foreclosed on, even though we had a short sale buyer. They were owned by Lehman Brothers, wouldn't accept the short sale. So they end up foreclosing on us right before I had my fourth child born. And uh, that was a stressful situation. I had to pay them 2000 bucks to stay in for two more weeks. And I mean, all this kind of crap happened. I had to lose everything to find out just that I actually had everything that I needed. Um, but I had to lose and strip all the stuff away to, to really look at myself. And did I value who I was? Was I still valuable even without all my stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and it took me losing everything to find my true value. And so when I got it back again, and I had to get out of the rat race the second time, paying off over a million dollars of debt, finally got out of the rat race the second time in 2016, um, it was much different because I didn't have all the ego and pride and that insecurity to go with it. Now it was just a matter of, I wanted the freedom. And, uh, and so I had to grow up a little bit from that perspective. Right. So my hope is you don't have to lose everything to discover that process, learn from a guy like me that screwed up, you know? Got it. Yeah. So now 2016 is there right? About mm -hmm. seven years ago, you're older, wiser, have your kids. You're probably now mentally making different investment decisions because now you're doing it for somebody else, right? And yeah, I've yeah. always found my motivation and a lot of myself and what I can do for others. Like if it was up to me, and I think it's up to, up, when you're up, it's up to most people, like if you could invest the money versus go have fun with the money and it's just for you, you'd rather just mm -hmm. go have fun. Like if you could sleep in versus go to the gym and it's just for you, you're probably going to sleep in. Uh -huh. So you're going to do the lazy stuff. We're generally humans are definitely lazy people when it's just for us. We have to find this motivation in something or someone else. And that's often what gives me 
the motivation to get up and go to the gym so I could live a long life and be healthy to take care of my wife, kids and grandkids when they come. I invest more for the fun of making sure that my wife and my kids are retired, my mom's retired versus just investing for me. Because if it was up to me, I probably would go buy that Mercedes again, which I've already had and had fun with. It's like, yeah, I want to, I, I like that cool stuff. My dad was always into watches and cars. I'm still into watches and cars, but I don't have an expensive watch or an expensive car because that's yeah. not my motivation anymore. Yep. So now you're, you're getting into your mature age. Now let's talk about the 40 to 50 year old that's in that accumulation phase of accumulation of mm-hmm. assets, but also has a, probably a much larger income and a lot more expenses. And a lot of people paint themselves in a corner. They're making 400 grand a year. They pay their taxes. They net out 250 to 300, but they have $18,000 a month in obligations because they have the boat, mm-hmm. the second house, the car, the first house, college education. And they're like, crap, I painted myself in a corner. I want to be free, but now is it too late? And I know you work with a yeah. lot of these kind of guys. You're one of them. You're in that age bracket, same as me. So what kind of advice or ideas can we give to those people to help them again, retire early, get out of the rat race with alternative investments? Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. Yeah, the, the biggest advice I give is, is to get your money out of prison. And, and this would probably even apply to those in their 50s and 60s too, right? Um, but when you start getting that accumulation phase, um, everybody tells you that net worth is the ultimate measure of your wealth, right? They tell you that you're supposed to pay off your debt save up a lot of money, be a, get a big net, nest egg, and then you can retire. But in truth, that's not the case. Um, because like I said, my dad did that and it didn't work for him. So why right. repeat his mistakes? Um, as well as every other Dave Ramsey graduate I talked to, who's especially in their 50s or so, um, maybe we'll talk about the Dave Ramsey graduate in a second, but they kind of tie together because um, get your money out of prison. Well, what I mean by that is, is one, I mean, make sure you're, you're, you're yeah, these are the three points I give. Get lean, get liquid, and get out right? Um, get lean means like you were talking about, like we are spending a lot more money. It just becomes a natural habit. We often, because life gets busy, we stop tracking our money. So start tracking your expenses, track your income too. Don't just ignore the income. We want that to grow. Um, but also look at your expenses and really decide, is this worth it? Is this really serving me in my life or not? You know, are you paying for a subscription every month that you had no clue you're paying for because you just kept paying it? You know, those kind of things. Uh, I, I've, you know, I had one client that came to me, they're in the same age bracket. Um, they got lots of like money, even in like Google stock and Facebook stock, right? Um, they got the retirement plans, but then we realized they had a lot of different debts. And, and as we started to look at their, their, what was the monthly outgo and even some of the debts, we said, you know what, let's, instead of just buying real estate, which was their whole intention to do alternative investments. I said, first, before we do that, let's see if we can free up some cash flow." And right. we did, we ended up freeing up with everything that we did. We freed up about $4,000 a month for them, which was, I mean, you think about that from a standpoint of me getting somebody to their, their financial independence number, that saves them right there at least four hundred dollars to $500,000 that they don't have to save to be able to become free, right? right. Because that, you know, to make $4,000 a month, you need about four hundred dollars to $500,000 to do that from a passive standpoint. Well, they did it, you know, and then we took the rest of the money and now we're investing it to get them financially independent this year, you know, while they're still young, while they're still in their late 40s. That's what I mean. Like, it's like, you know, free up the money, get lean, get liquid means get your money away from the stuff that's locked up, even in equity in your home. Um, that could be money just sitting around in, in savings, right? You know, like whatever it is, like get an assessment of money we can work with and then get out, which could mean getting out of the stock market, you know, especially if you've already lost. Uh, the, pr- the crazy thing is most people psychologically won't stop being in the stock market because they don't want to lose money. The truth is you have it lost. If you've been in the market more than two years, you've actually had a gain. You know, all we've lost in the last, last, you know, six months has really just been the first two years. It's old value. Well, what? Yeah, it's all, it was all balloon payments from the government. Yeah. Yeah. 
it was all fake anyways, right? It was already overinflated by 2020. And then the government threw in more money and it just threw the, made the balloon just explode. So to, to be able to say, hey, I lost money, I better hold on, which is what people psychologically want to do because they don't want to lose. Think of it as like, no, I gained. The market started to come down. It's probably going to come down a lot more. I should probably pull my money now. Again, we're not giving advice because you know we're not investment advisors, but this might be the best time to pull out your profits and run, as we taught in the stock trading world back in the day. Take your profits and run, and then get that deployed in someplace else that will actually generate cash flow. So that's what I—that's the kind of advice I would say to really open up to when you're in your 40s. Yeah, I mean, when I put together a traditional financial plan, I was a financial advisor too, and I kept in touch with a lot of my buddies that are still in that space. I had my buddy Brett come over, uh, who I actually mentored when he first got in the business. I was his kind of uh, mentor and coach. He's still in the business after 20 years. He comes over, puts together a financial plan. I didn't buy any products or services from him, but it helped yeah, my yeah. wife and I get more comfortable and kind of just the exercise of talking out our plans, ideas. He came back with a plan and it was basically, again, diversify and wait, which is what every financial advisor sell, says and sells. Yep. But I was baffled to see him put together a plan that said, look, if you had a million dollars, the, the blended average of the return that we're going to put together is 7%. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, you get 10% in the market, but that's only if you're in large caps and some small cap stocks and it's 100%. But what does every advisor sell? They sell a blended portfolio. And when yep. you roll in some cash and you roll in some bonds, drags the, the, the return down. So I'm like, okay, if I want to make, take a million bucks, 7%, $70,000 a year, and there's taxes still to pay because that's all interest income and profit. So I'm really going to net maybe a 5% return. I'm making 50,000 bucks. Okay. Now mm -hmm. you take an investor that maybe has, instead of a million saving and saving and slaving and waiting to save a million. If you take a $250,000 nut that you've got to invest and you can earn a 20% annual return through, let's say a real mm -hmm. estate syndication, Maybe you right, get a pref right. return of six, eight, ten percent. Then you also get yeah, equity yeah. in that deal. It annualizes out to a twenty percent return, and that return is also tax advantage because of depreciation. Now you're talking about you you could achieve essentially the same thing, right? A twenty percent return on two fifty yields you the same fifty thousand dollars, right? The net fifty thousand. Mm -hmm versus saving a million and earning the 7% minus the tax, right? Uh -huh. So our audience needs to understand the difference is that in the dollars, you either have a million working for you to earn 50,000, or you have 250,000 working for you to earn 50,000. That's the difference that Chris and I, that's the real tangible difference that we're talking about. Chris, you probably have a lot of the same stories. And when people you, yeah, that yeah. you work with that are in that 40 to 50, 60 year old bracket, hear this, like there's such an epiphany that goes off in their brain. This light mm -hmm. bulb starts popping off and they're like, Oh my God, I'm closer than I thought. Yeah. Oh yeah. And there's more hope than you realize. Well, here, let's dispel, dispel some myths for one, because we've always been told the market does 10 or 12%. That is 100% false. Um, you look at the 30 year S and P average, right? And I just calculated this yesterday, end of June, 2022 um, calculated this. It was actually, the 30-year average was 7.74%, even with the last 13 years being pretty awesome, right? right. Despite all that, the 30-year average is only 7.74. The 20-year average is exactly, uh, pretty much exactly 4%. <laughs> so, wow. um, so think about that. Or sorry, I, I take that back. No, it did come up. It's actually, it actually got up to 7% just because of where it fell in the months. But if I had done this like a month earlier, it was like 5%. So it just depends on the month you look at, right? Regardless, um, you're lucky to get 7%. Um, that's before fees get taken out. That's before the taxes, like you mentioned, all those things. That's if you're 100% in the market. But the truth is when they tell you go into retirement, and I know because I was trained to do, teach you this, um, is to move you away from the stock market. Keep a little bit of the market, but move you away to bonds and things like that that aren't paying much anyways. So you're lucky to maybe make 3 4% in retirement, which is why um, the Wall Street Journal came out last October and said, when you get to retirement, you should only pull out at most 3% a year. Wow. And the younger you are, the less that number should be. So if you're like 35, thinking you're going to be, you know, fire, financially independent, retire early, right? Yeah, it should be 2%. 
And, and I see a lot of people thinking, I'm already there. I can pull out my 4%. 4% rule has been dead for years. I've been saying it for 15 years, and finally the Wall Street Journal said it. It's not that way. So 3%, like you said, a million bucks. If you had a million dollars, you finally set up all these retirement plans to then live on 3%. That's 30000 a year. So I actually had a, a military uh, colonel that just retired from the military in California just this year. Um, he's got a million dollars in a retirement plan. He said, Chris, my financial advisor is saying I can only live on maybe 30000 a year that I pay taxes on. So think about it. You're a millionaire retiring below the poverty level, right? That's the financial plans we've been given. Versus like you were saying, even if that million bucks, even with, let's say that you only did off the pref, not even the growth, because maybe you're trying to hedge for inflation, right? Just the pref. Maybe the, it was a 10% pref just for easy numbers. Well, guess what? That, that now generates 100,000 a year versus 30,000 a year with a bunch of taxes, right? Right. And uh, in his case, real life scenario, we had a mixture of different uh, syndications he did, some with oil and gas, some with like apartments and, and turnkeys and things like that. He's actually generating $12,000 a month in passive income. He just sent me an email a couple months ago saying, hey, as an update, when I first met you, we were at a couple hundred bucks a month of passive income with that million bucks. Yeah. Now we're at 12,000 a month. Just thought I'd let you know. And that was his goal to be financially independent. And he's got other monies coming in too. So that's the difference that you have so much more hope than you realize once you get away from that traditional financial advising mindset. Yeah, absolutely. I think the challenge there is generally people spend so little time on their finances. Again, the, there's yeah. the, the old saying that people spend more time on vacation than they do on their finances <laughs> every year, planning the vacation versus planning their finances. But there are sure. people out there. Like yesterday, I had a, a great conversation with one of our investors. He's into us for well over a million bucks. And I'm on the phone with him pretty much monthly. And he, mm -hmm. sometimes more often even, sometimes a couple times a month, but he is so proactive in looking for deal flow as a passive investor, investing in yeah. syndications, mobile home parks, self-storage. And so you wonder when I met him five, six years ago, he had almost none of this passive income. Now he's got hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in passive right. income, hired his wife and all those kind of things because he's very proactive at looking for deal flow and very proactive at educating himself. Chris, why do you yeah, think man. so many people are so lackadaisical and just okay with, I'm just going to throw it in the market because that's the easy thing and I don't have to research it. They're really trading, if they will, the financial independence that everybody wants simply because they don't want to take the few extra minutes to get on a webinar, get on a podcast, reach out to a general partner, reach out to a, a deal sponsor and learn. It's amazing to me that most people, so many people don't take that more seriously. What's your take on that? You know, I think if people knew they would take it seriously, I mean, not everybody, but I think a lot more would. Um, it's, it's that law of attention, right? It's just like when you buy a new car, all of a sudden it seems like everybody's driving that new car around. Um, when I was a financial advisor, I didn't even see this whole other world. I didn't know it existed. I thought people just bought real estate and made 3% a year on appreciation. I thought right. that's how people made money in real estate. I never realized how much difference there was in cash flow and income that came in with less money. Um, once that became apparent, then, of course, as you start to see, then you're almost like a magnet. You start to all of a sudden say, oh, there it is. There it is. I never saw it before. It was, it was hidden in the background. Now it's coming to the forefront. So I think that's a big reason. And also, how, who do you trust? I mean, mm -hmm. you, you get, uh, I mean, you obviously you're, you raise capital in, 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 with you, Josh. Like, you got an awesome company. But people are going to say, well, of course, he says, you know, his company's awesome because that's his company. You know, that's his self-interest. So people don't know where to turn. They don't know who to trust. And so it almost seems overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, but in truth, if you can really get past that and they have almost somebody guide you through that process and say, hey, here's how we can actually do this. Here's what might actually work best in your situation. Eliminate all these other options that really don't fit what you're trying to accomplish anyways. Put that out of your mind. Let's focus over here. These are the ones that will actually do it for you. I mean, that's I mean, that's the reason why we're in business, right? Is that, you know, there are no financial advisors that can legally recommend doing all-term investment if they have a security license, because the securities license stops them from recommending anything outside of mutual funds. Right. That's where we come in, where we're not investment advisors, but we come in more as consultants saying, hey, look at these people. These are people that have been vetted. These are people have done a, had a great track record. They're, they could be, you know, it doesn't mean that's guaranteed, but these people are probably more trustworthy because they've been through these market cycles and things before. They know what a recession looks like, unlike somebody who just showed up in 2019 and said, I make money in real estate, right? Yeah. You know, there's a big difference in, in the, the level of trust and the trust factor there. So it does help to have that guidance to kind of 
narrow the focus and make it and make it less time invest on your part versus trying to become the expert at everything. I love it, Chris. Listen, uh, Chris has done a great job. I, I love talking with Chris. We've had each other on our each other's podcast. Chris, I'm gonna have you back again to talk about infinite banking specifically. Mm -hmm. I want to do another podcast, just talk about that concept with you because Chris yeah, and I have yeah. so much in common from being financial advisors in the past to retiring early, to retiring our parents, to being through multiple recessions. Like we have a lot that we could share, but we have limited time today. So guys, make sure you check out Chris's show, the Chris Miles Money Show on Apple Podcasts. He's done how many 621 episodes? You've done a ton Something of episodes. Like that. Yeah, over well over 620. Yeah, it's a fantastic show. Um, and then also check out Chris's blog at moneyripples.com. Um, I would love to have my audience reach out to you, Chris, to see what kind of deal flow you're working on just to learn more because I can, you know, just from the, the couple of times that we've had the chance to interact, I could tell that you and I are very much on the same page. You have a very much a similar yeah. background and I would love for my audience to engage with you and figure out how you guys can help each other. So check out the money show, check out moneyripples.com. And Chris, let's have you back on uh, as soon as possible to talk about infinite banking and some other strategies. So thanks so much yes, for joining me it. today on accelerated investor. This is a lot of fun. Same here. Appreciate it, Josh. Well, hey guys, listen, I hope you enjoyed that episode. And if you did, I would be so grateful if you would share this episode all over social media, share it on Facebook with your friends and family, share it on Instagram, share it on LinkedIn. Um, and again, don't forget to come back for episode number two with Chris and I, as we talk about infinite banking and how that can also be added to your portfolio to reduce taxes to save money long-term and to be able to pay yourself an interest rate while you are using your own money. Uh, so check out that episode as well when it gets released. And again, if you are an investor looking for more opportunities, more options to create more passive cash flow for yourself, go visit freelandventures.com slash passive. There you will find a, my deal flow, my personal deal flow that I'm buying that I'm sponsoring, that I'm investing in, and that I can help you working together in a joint venture type partnership, an opportunity for you to earn passive returns and passive income and help you achieve your retirement goals, right? I love what Chris said on the show, F-I-R-E, FIRE, right? Financially independent, retired early. That's what I want for you. Thanks for so much for joining me today on Accelerated Investor. We'll see you next time. You were just listening to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something new, help us build the AI community by leaving a review and five-star rating on our iTunes podcast channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another episode. To see passive investing opportunities, visit freelandventures.com slash passive. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of with multifamily apartments, apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching with Josh at www.joshcantwellcoaching.com. <laughs>